ustedes con dónde les tienes la palabra. <clears throat> Good afternoon, my name is Leila and I'm going to talk to you about my master thesis on mixonovirus evolution of the Toledo L3 variant and the surveillance of genes implicated on this physics field. I'm going to introduce you to the disease itself, the <laughs> virus, different segments that I use, the methods, my results, we'll discuss them a bit and then we will conclude this presentation. So to introduce you to this virus, this is a liquid fox virus native to South America where it infects a rabbit. It does not send serious symptoms. However, <clears throat> when the virus got introduced to Europe in the 50s as a measure to control wild European rabbit populations, it changed the symptomatology. The infection went to 9 to 12 days with fibromas or myxoma showing up on the ears eyes and genitalia of the rabbits. There's also mm -hmm. virulent discharge from the eyes and nose, which ends up usually being a fatal disease. However, a few years after its introduction, something very interesting happened where genomic mutations gave rise to attenuated strains. Once these strains develop, the genome remains stable. That is until 2018, mm -hmm. when there was a species jump discovered. Now, to understand this species jump, I'm first going to tell you a little bit about what the genome of classical myxoma looks like. This is a fairly large genome composed of 161 kilobase pairs that encode for 171 open reading frames with over 100 genes ranging from M000.5 to 1M156. Now, with this species jump, it changed Host. The new host is the Iberian pair, and here you see a picture of the whole genome. Each arrow has a different, different open reading frame, and there were three key mutations detected. The first one was an insertion of 2.8 kilobase pairs into gene M009. There's also a truncation of gene M036 due to the addition of four adenines, and a truncation of gene M152 due to the <laughs> insertion of a citosine. So now I'm going to explain to you a little more about the mutation seen on gene 009. So this insert right here contains four genes that are homologous to either different Fox viruses or to the myxoma virus itself, this cassette right here, <coughs> which will be homologous for genes 60, 61, 64, and 65. And interesting feature of this cassette, however, is that it's inverted in nature. These mutations gave rise to several questions for us. So how is this virus going to evolve in nature? Because the first time that it did a species mm -hmm. jump here in Europe, it actually developed into several strains. So is that genome going to remain stable right now, or is it going to mutate? And what about the mutations that we have already seen on different genes? Are they actually essential for this species job as a whole, or is it only one of them? So we set out a few objectives to better understand this. The first was the study in vitro of the evolution experiment with the hermixoma virus. This will probably help us see more cytopathic effect changes and how it looked like in the wild. But also, we wanted to survey the genes that I just explained to you, both from in vitro samples that I would acquire here and from in vivo samples that were acquired from the lab. So, on to the cell lines. <coughs> to do these experiments, we needed models that were representative of both the previous and the new host of this virus. The new host, which is the hair, is represented by the HNR cell line. And then we have the rabbit cell line, the RK13 cell line, representing the previous host, which is the rabbit. The virus that this thesis is focused on is actually the Hermixoma virus, an isolated named Hermixoma Toledo 18L3 virus with a titer of <coughs> 1 times 10 to the fifth plaque forming units per milliliter. An interesting fact about this virus is that its tropism is able to infect not only the hair cell line, but also the rabbit cell line. So we'll be studying that in parallel. We also compare with the Lausanne myxoma virus, which is a classical strain of myxoma, 
that has a tire of 1 times 10 to the 6 black forming units. The Lausanne virus has a tropism that is only able to infect the rabbit cell line. It cannot infect any other liberates. Now, for the methodology. One of the biggest experiments that were performed was an evolution experiment done in parallel on rabbit and hares. The image here depicts what was done for simplicity purposes only to the hair cell line. So we will start with a low infection point to prevent the virus from developing any deficient variants if you will go to a higher one. So we'll infect and allow the infection to go for 72 hours, at which point it was harvested. This period of time is defined as a passage, and this experiment went on for 15 passages in total. Every so often, the viral titer was also assayed. We will also see with this the growth curve, plant morphology and science, and we'll do some DNA surveillance on this experiment as well as in in vivo samples. On to our results. As I mentioned previously, the evolution experiments seek to force the evolution in parallel on two cell lines of this virus. This will allow us to monitor the cytopathic effect or CTE, see the viral carriers changes, as well as how the mutations progress over time. Here, you see one of the initial passages that were done. On top, you see the control cell lines, which were not infected, and then the infected cell lines with the same hermic virus. Throughout this presentation, you will see a code like this, where the first two letters represent the cell line that was grown. Then the virus represented by L3, and then the passage number will continue to change as the experiment progresses. So, pointed with arrows, we see classical myxoma formations on the cell lines. In circles, we also see areas where the monolayer lifted either due to infection itself or the health of the cells, but we also see some myxomas. Now, the myxomas are 3D structures that usually resemble tumors, and we know that these are the classical myxoma-like appearance because we also infected the rabbit cell line with the Lausanne or classical myxoma to compare, and we see those same 3D structures popping out. A very interesting result, however, was achieved at passage number six, where for the virus grown on pairs, the plaque size actually seemed to get larger. And on the virus that had been growing on rabbit cells, we see a new cytopathic effect. This is called a syncytia, which is usually a multinucleic cell resulting from the infection of one single cell that then is affected by the fusion proteins that are expressed by the virus and their interaction with the host caused this membrane, this cell membrane to actually fuse with the neighboring cells, spreading the infection. And it can be composed by several hundreds or thousands of cells. At this point, we weren't quite sure if this was actually an effect of the virus because it's a common, it is not a common myxoma effect, although it's a common viral side effect. Continuing the experiment, and on passage 15, we see that the myxomas that have been resulting from the virus growing on her cells are still very defined and uniform. They're very easy to see. Whereas we see another change in CPE for the virus that has been growing on rabbits. We now see a mixture of myxomas with syncytia. So we know something molecularly changed here, but we don't know if this CPE is caused by the host virus interactions and if it will change if we grow this virus on the hair cells. So, with this, we then infected the hair cell line with different passages from the virus in different hosts. For the most part, we saw the appearance of myxomas, which was the expected CPE, but for the later passage of the virus grown on rabbit, we saw syncytia alongside myxomas as well. So this CPE is conserved <coughs> from now on. And another part that was going to be studied on this evolution experiment was actually the changes happening to genes 009, 36, and 152. We chose five three representative passages, which were passages 5, 10, and 14, to screen for these genes. For gene 009, as we can see here, 
we see in this band that is almost at 3,000 kilobase pairs that it must contain that region of 2.8 kilobase pairs inserted. Whereas when you screen the Lausanne or classical mixoma for that same region, it's barely reaching 500 base pairs. Therefore, these are positive pair mixomas, at least for the mutation seen before on 009. Sequencing analysis was done for 152 and 036. The sequencing was conserved in all passages and no new mutations were detected on gene M036. One of the other things that needed to be done with this study was to see how the viral pair changed from all 15 passages. Now, most of this experiment was done blindly, hoping to keep the moiety of infection low. However, when you retroactively take the viral tire of the virus grown on rabbits and the virus grown on hares, you see that it changed from passage to passage, but overall the trend is that it grew for both of them with the titers from the virus growing on rabbit cells usually being higher than those four. Here. This is, however, a snapshot of only one point. So we wanted to see how it would look like if we did a growth curve. Growth curves are usually done in triplicate. So what will be done is we will infect different cell cultures with different passages, the initial passages and later passages of this virus. The growth curve allows to see how this virus replication rate change over time. Now, usually, brokers for virus actually peak at 72 hours, but the interesting result that we see is that for the latest passage of the virus grown on hairs, it actually extended all the way to 96 hours. This suggests that the virus has been adapting to its new host, but we don't know if this broker is larger than this as we stop the experiment at 96 hours, but it will be interesting to continue this growth curve to see how far it goes. Now, these viral tires have all been done on the RK13 cell line. So we weren't quite sure how they will compare if we did them on the first cell line where they will grow naturally. So the general trend that we see when we assay the first and later passages is that the viral titer increase over time. And then when you grow it on the hair cell, you see the same trend being true. However, the passage does decrease in titer when it's grown on the hair cell line than on the rabbit cell line. We saw different CPE changes, one of them being that the hairs black assays were getting larger. So we wanted to see how these actually measure with numbers. So we took the area of several flax and counted them, averaged them, and noticed that indeed the area of the flax has been getting larger, especially when it grows on the hair cell line than when it grows on the rabbit cell line. And you can see here on these pictures the difference of the same virus growing on two cell lines. We also wanted to see what happened to the virus that had been growing on the rabbits. So we see the opposite, the flag size actually decreased over time. And we believe that this might be due to the appearance of Cynthia on passage six that carried through the whole experiment. So we infected the virus and counted the amount of nuclei on the Cynthia. We found then that the syncyte that was growing from the virus on the rabbit cell lines was twice as large as that from the hair cell line. However, this result may be a little underestimated as it was very hard to see the nuclei from the light microscope. Now, we're going to move on to the surveillance of in vivo samples for the genes 009 and 1. 52 as well as 36. So the lab have been acquiring samples since the year 1992 to 2020, both from rabbits and hares. I assay 71 of them, 31 from hares, 44 rabbits, and I know from personal communication with my tutor 
that all of these samples have been previously screened for gene M009. All rabbit samples did not contain that addition of 2.8 kilobase pairs, and all hair samples did. <clears throat> So I focus more on gene 36, which is a very large gene. It's about 3,000 kilobase pairs. And here you see a compilation of different mutations that we're seeing on this gene. It's very interesting to see that most of them were actually insertion, insertions or deletions, which don't tend to happen often. So one of such mutations, when you compare the classical myxoma sequence to the hair myxoma sequence, is that addition of four adenines that I mentioned earlier, highlighted in green, but one for the addition of a fifth adenine, which I highlighted in red. And this was in several samples. Another mutation that was interesting was on a region that is usually conserved between the thermixoma and the classical myxoma. What I saw was either a deletion of adenines on this group of two, or the deletion of an adenine on a group of four, or the deletion on both regions. This suggests that this gene actually has great plasticity and might not be of use for this virus. Now, on to gene 152. Gene 152, as we know, got truncated. It usually codes for a certain, which is an immunosuppressor. By it being truncated, it might be what it's aiding on the infection of the hair. Now, but we had 71 samples and needed a high throughput assay to study all of this. So we took advantage of an assay that was being developed by the lab. The way that I optimized this assay was first by confirming that there were samples that contained the 2.8 kilobase per insert on gene M009 to determine which were hair and which were rabbit. From then, I sequenced those same samples to confirm the addition of the cytosine on the ones that I determined had the insertion. And this actually allowed us to put to use a mill curve analysis. This mill curve analysis will give us a lower temperature for the rabbit samples, which had no cytosine, or the extra cytosine, I should say. And then the hair samples will have a higher milk temperature. Now, this essay still gave me a few mixed results that later I had to sequence to confirm identities. But overall, I found that all 31 hair samples did contain that additional secrecy, and none of the rabbit samples had it. As a summary of what I did for this master thesis, well, my in vitro evolution experiment unveiled different changes in CPE, the viral virus plate morphology. I also found that the Hermit Somatolid 18L3 virus had adapted better to grow for the hair cell line. The mutations that have been previously described on gene M009 and M152 have been conserved in all in vivo and in vitro samples. And the large number of mutations found on gene M036 showed the great plasticity of this gene, and that is no longer essential for this virus. Now, with your permission, I will read my conclusions. The in vivo the in vitro evolution experiment led to a change in CPE characteristics of myxoma, which affects virus titer. Morphological changes seen in the CPE of RFKL3 indicate lower viral titers, which could in turn lead to longer lasting infections. <coughs> changes in flag size did not produce considerable changes in replication rates. The number of cell formings in sepia is approximately five times larger than that on a viral plate. RKL3P14 in sepia grown in RK13 cells is twice as large than when it is grown in HNR cells. The virus titer of HNL3P14 was higher than RKL3P14, <coughs> suggesting a better adaptation toward the new host. After 15 passages, Hermitsoma continues to replicate in her cells with an extended growth curve past 96 hours. The virus adapted better to grow in HNR cells, which is the new host, than in RK13 cells, the previous host. <clears throat> the mutations previously described in genes M009 and M152 were maintained in the virus regardless of the cell line used for pathogen. The mutations previously described in region M009 and gene M152 were observed in all in vivo samples that were collected from her tissue. 
The milgram analysis of being M152 was an effective tool for high throughput screening of rabbit and her myxoma and her myxoma affected samples, although a small number of samples gave mixed results. And the large number of mutations in again M036 in the medieval samples indicate that it is not an essential gene for her myxoma survival. Thank you very much.